Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another video. Today I'll take you with me on a ride to London. Beautiful sunny Sunday in January in London. I think it's first time on record since 1954, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a great opportunity to go for a ride. Really, I could have taken the hills, I could have gone to Windsor, but today I'm going to London because I still enjoy riding to London. This was probably my first breakthrough in cycling since uh, when I bought my son a bike, when he said a couple of years ago that why don't we try to go to London. At that time I had a hybrid bike. I never ventured uh, to city center. We found now that London's got a lot of cycling infrastructure. You can avoid the busier roads and junctions. So I'm going to show you today some of the early routes we took. Now, a couple of years forward, I got two road bikes. I got so much into it. The cycling to central London is uh, so enjoyable for me. It gives me a sense of freedom. With a bike, with a good pace, you can go anywhere. Behind me, the huge complex of Wimbledon. If you come to London, don't forget to visit. There's a museum. And if you're lucky enough to come during the two weeks of the tournament, at the end of June, beginning of July, is a must to go visit. For me, coming from Wimbledon, trying to go to central London, Wandsworth would be the first stop where I could reach here without really engaging big traffic. I could go on the side roads and it's uh, very convenient. In London, there's multiple stages of implementation of cycling routes from the very early stage on the London Cycling Network, where they basically used existing roads and they try to follow a path where you could really avoid the main arteries and the main traffic. Then eventually it evolved more and more uh, sharing payments where you can uh, use your bike on the pavement as well. And ultimately the best solution of course is the segregated cycle lanes. And when Boris Johnson uh, was elected that was one of the big uh, points of his uh, mayoral campaign. And uh, I have to say he really introduced these uh, big cycleways, the super highways, and in most instances they are really good, segregated completely, and we will see later on the one that starts from Westminster that is really useful to reach East London. Yeah. Very busy roundabout in Wandsworth. You can go to traffic, you can also follow the sign to go under the big roundabout and come out on the other side. Here we are on the other side of the roundabout, very easy. From now on we can join the bus lane, bicycle and motorbike as well. We can join the bus lane, it feels a uh, lot safer. And we are going to go to Battersea Bridge and join the river path. Yes, the blue paint was quite of a striking feature of this uh, cycle super highway. I'm doing now the CS8. It's not completely segregated, of course, as you can see. So some say that it's just a blue paint on the road. But I have to say it gives you a little bit more reassurance. And the blue color, yes, was uh, introduced when Barclays was the sponsor of the Cycle Hire Scheme. So it was in tone of the sponsorship and the color of the bike lane as well. I am joining the Thames pathway here at Battersea Heliport. I could have joined from uh, Wandsworth Bridge as well. This is a beautiful path that runs along the Thames, very popular with runners as well. If you want to avoid the traffic, you can cycle as well uh, to have a really peaceful stroll down the river.
following the Thames path you would have come out here at Alba Bridge it is the most beautiful bridge in whole London I prefer to cross the river here because the bridge is amazing you could come over at night it's beautifully lit up it is an unmissable location Here you can see some of the most beautiful Chelsea houses on Cheney Walk. Mick Jagger used to live here, Bob Marley around the corner, his uh, favorite pub over there, the Cross Keys. From here on I'm going to join the traffic and uh, hit the road up until I reach uh, Westminster. Going through Boxall, it becomes really really nice and flat, very good to hit your fast speed on uh, your bike. Yes, this will be the place for you to race your fellow commuters at the traffic light and sprint through the available spaces in the bike lane. Parliament Square is maybe the most visited location in London and in the whole country. Westminster Abbey over there, where Prince William uh, got married, of course. College Green, uh, you can stage your own protest. There was a Save the Ring Break march earlier. Uh, they've all gone. Yeah, they were banging on about this uh, old uh, ring breaks. I don't know why. The statue saw Winston Churchill, Nelson Mandela is a uh, really an iconic place and of course the Big Ben I did ask to unveil at least the top part for my ride and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they, they, they did it for me the good tour guide they will tell you that Big Ben is actually the name of the bell and uh, but you know I want to concentrate on other matter today and uh, quite interesting to, to notice that the shape of the UK Parliament like a rectangular room then eventually over the years has uh, favored the two-party setup while for example in Europe you do have circular rooms to allocate lots of uh, different small parties now the debate is, is quite simple then one uh, party on one side and uh, the other on the other side so today for example they are debating on one side the socks uh, over the leg warmers and on the other side the socks under the leg warmers it's one of those uh, very intricate political uh, themes of the day we are going to turn right and just before Westminster Bridge we will have on our left maybe the best cycle segregated lane that will take you straight through East London up to Tower Hill and beyond. This is an amazing bike lane. This will take you through central London Tower London and even further and you can reach the Docklands through here in a very safe way well safe there's a lot of tourists just um, walking without looking at you London Eye over there yeah. fun fact they built London Eye on the Thames and they lifted it up well they tried to lift it up and they couldn't do it some Italian circus um, operator eventually managed to raise it up so yes we contributed to this as well and this is new scotland yard actually new new scotland yard because it used to be in a different uh, bigger building near victoria now this is the newer location with the iconic rotating sign behind me cleopatra's needle 
is an Egyptian obelisk. We got so many of these in Rome. This is the only one in London and it is the oldest uh, man-made object in London about 5,000 years ago. Some say there's a cyclist carved in stone with a mechanical 105. That was, you know, unbelievable at Egyptian age that they still use that kind of old technology. From Waterloo Bridge onwards, we will reach then the city, the financial uh, center of London, where 99.9% .9 of Pinarello customer base work. Following all the way the CS3, all the segregated bike lane from Westminster, you arrive here at the Tower of London. Behind it, the iconic Tower Bridge, some of the remaining Roman walls of Londinium. And uh, thinking about it, this was the most powerful element of all, this feeling that you could just jump on your bike ride along and uh, go anywhere in uh, London, even a big city like London. It, it was unbelievable, it was really the breakthrough for me and my cycling. All of a sudden the city became so small, I could go and ride anywhere and the freedom sensation that you get is so powerful, it, it really got me. Back on the CS3, it is still segregated past Tower of London and we are going to go through Wapping to reach Canary Wharf. Going east from Tower of London, the scenery changes quite a lot you don't have the historic buildings anymore. You still have old warehouses. It was used as a docks or wharf warehouse at Riverfront, where all the goods used to come from all over the world to London. If you keep following the CS3, you will see on your right hand side all these beautiful uh, warehouses, most of them with the original cranes that used to lift the goods up. Such an unbelievable testimony of the past and I really appreciate that London with their heritage have kept all these uh, old uh, structures. They made a huge, huge uh, effort in uh, keeping the old uh, industrial buildings intact because they are fantastic, they're really beautiful. And this really shows you how diverse and ever-changing London is. On one side you have poplar with normal houses and uh, on the other side the multi-million buildings for the banking institutions. It's very useful at poplar, the DLR station, to change side and go over Canary Wharf through the footpath. Yes, guys, in uh, these boardrooms you see there, the bankers will put together the spec of their Colnago and Pinarellos. They will play with the available components until the cost of the bike reaches the GDP of a small country. Once they reach the level, it's uh, OK, and then they click the button on the order. And here at Churchy Place, you have uh, Lap Bikes, which is a fantastic shop when uh, after a good day of trading you have uh, gained a couple of bitcoins you can come here and spend everything in your favorite BMC yeah the seven and ice skating ring
I'm back on the CS3, heading back home this time. I left Canary Wharf and I'm going to reach again Tower of London and City and the West End. From here I'm near London Bridge which used to be the only bridge connecting London to the south is the place more or less where the Romans built the first bridge and it's been for centuries the only link through the other side and at the back you do have the not only the oldest part of the city but also where the original Roman settlement used to be still now you do have all the gates listed like Bishop's Gate old gate where the Romans had their own gates throughout the city. I'm going to go through London Bridge and uh, do the route back on the other side of the river and now of course you don't see anything of the old bridge that used to be. London Bridge used to have all the constructions on top of it like the old medieval bridges and uh, the gates at the exit and entry used to have like parts of uh, killed enemies or executed criminals that used to be put in there just as a warning for the visitors like you know if you had mixed the parts on your group set put the SRAM parts with Shimano yes you used to be cut in halves and uh, displayed across the bridge gates That's the shard, of course, from Renzo Piano. That's the borough market area leading to London Bridge. What you don't see here, and uh, it's difficult to even imagine, that back in the days, this used to be the gateway for the travel to the other parts of the country, of course, famously to Canterbury hence the Canterbury Tales. Across this road there used to be old alleyways like this one where the old pubs or inns as they used to be called were the places where all the travelers used to stay overnight waiting then to either come to London or to go to other destination across England. And here we have maybe the most famous of all the inns, the George I'm arriving at Waterloo from the south part of the river and uh, I'm going to cut across north because I won't be able to resist the view from Waterloo Bridge which is fantastic. On one side you got all the old buildings and on the right hand side the newer city buildings. Quite striking from here you do have full view from uh, Westminster the London Eye and on uh, the other side you do see the city buildings all the modern ones Trafalgar Square with the iconic Nelson column this time I will go straight through the Admiralty Arch head through the Mall and uh, straight towards Buckingham Palace Likely there's a red tarmac there, it's been put there so the horses they use in the parade found a softer ground and also not to puncture the very thin Victoria Corsa tires of the guys that bombed down uh, the mall. we will be approaching Buckingham Palace, the Queen's residence. Although she doesn't spend much time in uh, Buckingham Palace now, permanently in uh, Windsor Castle. And very few know that Marble Arch was originally placed in front of uh, Buckingham Palace.
And a cycling tour of London cannot be complete without Hyde Park, full of cycling path as well. And uh, at my back you can see the beautiful residence that was gifted to the Duke of Wellington for having defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. Funny enough, that house hasn't got an address, it's just known as One London. So that's it. All the addresses start from here in the whole of London. Behind me, Harrods, the world-renowned superstore, luxury superstore. They said once that they could get you everything. I went in and I asked for a 12-speed Dura Ace and uh, I was shown the door. I don't know why, but yeah. Just outside, nice bridge on Fulham Road. That's Bibendum, the iconic Art Deco old Michelin uh, Thai garage that now is of course a luxury restaurant very very beautiful uh, I tried to go in but got continental on my bike and of course it was uh, non from the French now I'm heading back to southwest London much quieter part going back through Fulham and uh, back to Wimbledon I hope you enjoy my tour of London great cycling destination I have to say, within the constraint of a big city, it's not a bad location to cycle through. I would not even dream of cycling in Rome, it's too congested, traffic is crazy. London, more or less, although it's not Amsterdam, but it's a great location to ride, good features, good uh, provision of uh, segregated cycle lanes if you want to travel in uh, maximum safety. And I have to say, highly recommend it. See you to the next video. Ciao.